get started with today's interview. I hope you pay close attention for all you replay viewers. We're going to get into some fun <laughs> content. As you know, in network marketing, we always try to teach some of the same topics in different ways. And other times we just go with completely different topics. And more and more with the social media age, everybody knows the importance and the value of actually branding yourself. And so I thought, if we're going to talk about branding yourself, who better than Julie, who five years ago, I don't even think she knew she was branding herself. She's a six-figure earner, annual earner, because there's a difference. People can say career, and you can add that up, and it can be more and more and more. She's had a ton of success with coaching, branding, building her network marketing business. She's built a fan page to 45,000 plus just since June. And the reason why that's important because a lot of people don't understand how to use a fan page. When should I use a fan page? Your fan page is effective. I get that question all the time. People are sending me messages on private messenger, right on Facebook messenger. And I apologize if I haven't gotten back to you. I try to answer as many questions as I can, but it's always social media related or almost always. And so, Julie, I'm really, really excited to, to talk with you tonight about some of these some of these fun concepts for building a brand. So maybe you could start and rewind a little bit and <clears throat> intertwine some of your story with where you started in branding. And then for those of you that are watching, whether you're watching the live or the replay, drop a one in the comments if you've ever heard Julie speak before, <laughs> if you've heard one of her Facebook lives, that counts and drop a two in the comments. Don't be shy, drop a two in the comments if she's somebody you've never heard before. So one if you have, two if you haven't. Julie, we had technical difficulties earlier with yes. Facebook, now it's working for us. So they can't stop you tonight. No, we are unstoppable, Rob. Thank you so much, by the way, for <clears throat> asking me to be on. I'm honored, I'm super excited. Um, Hey, Kelly. Hi, guys. Oh, this is really cool. Um, thank you, Rob, first of all, for all you do for our community here. And we we all love this group. So many people talk about the human networking. So I'm really excited to share it also with my community. Okay. So with that being said, um, <clears throat> Julie Burke here. I am a former, um, let's see, I worked in corporate America um, right out of high school. I'm going to take you back to corporate world because I feel that a lot of you will, will resonate with me here. Um, <clears throat> graduated high school early, went into corporate, and basically um, realized very, very quickly that corporate was not the place for me. And <clears throat> I was miserable. I was depressed. I, <laughs> I hated my boss. I, I sat there and I said, am I really going to do this for the next 40 to 50 years of my life? Now, my dad was always an entrepreneur, and he owned a very successful business, which tanked. Um, I don't know if you know, my, you know Microsoft, right? <laughs> Microsoft was born, and he owned a computer graphics company. And so I saw my father literally rebuild his a business from the ground up after we went bankrupt, right? So I always kind of had that entrepreneur spirit, but <clears throat> I didn't know exactly... I didn't really understand the concept of, of something like that, but the next closest thing to it was a franchise, right? Like that was my ticket to freedom. I was super excited. <laughs> so at 22 years old, um, I purchased a franchise, a multi-unit franchise, invested almost $700,000. I did have a partner. I actually saved up the money for the franchise fee and they personally backed me. So. <clears throat> It was a big deal. Like that's a huge what, what excited you about doing a franchise? Because obviously you had the entrepreneurs, you were a little bit excited yeah. but scared with what happened with your dad, but you saw what was possible. Right. And then you're going to start and you're bet I mean seven hundred thousand dollars. I don't care yes. who you're getting money <laughs> from, how much is yours or somebody else's, like that that's scary. So I mean, yeah. why and keep going on with your story. I'm just curious though, why a franchise? Um a turnkey operation and brand recognition. And I so um, it was a, a sandwich, they were sandwich shops. And I saw the vision and my my family laughed at me. They thought I was absolutely out of my mind crazy. 
Um, fortunately, my sister and her husband at the time, they had the, the, the financial backing, right? So we went in as partners. They were just a silent partner. But what I thought was, yes, I'm going to own my own business. This is so awesome, right? <laughs> well, here I was unlocking the door in the morning at 5.30 a.m. and locking the door at night at 10.30 p.m. for years. You and owned a job. What? You owned a job, not a I, I, I own, I own, I call it an adult daycare. I own adult daycares, like no joke. Um, no one will treat your business like how you will treat your business, right? And so I couldn't go on vacation. I couldn't take time off. When I was sick, I had to come in. If my manager called off sick, I had to go in. I was literally like a prisoner to my stores. <clears throat> and um, it was difficult for me to trust people. I was, you know, I was threatened. I was robbed several times. I mean, just, and I live in a good neighborhood. It doesn't matter. Like, they just saw an opportunity and I was young, right? I'm a young business owner. So a lot of people treated me as their equal, right? Because a lot of people that worked for me were either high school, you know, just out of high school or college graduates. And that does sound like adult daycare. It I mean, was yeah, an adult no, you're, daycare. You're changing diapers, adults <laughs> diapers. That's no fun. Yes, I was. Uh, I, yes, I was. So anyways, after eight years, those ran me into the ground. And my husband and I, you know, <clears throat> we were pregnant with our first child. And I, I was so stressed. I was beyond stressed. And I just needed to be done. We went through a lawsuit with our landlord. So if we have any traditional business owners in this group, I'm sure that they understand where I'm coming from. Right. When you own a traditional business, it owns you. And so I just we decided to sell and luckily we made a profit. We were able to walk away almost seven figures we sold that business for. So at 32 years old, what happened was, you know, we were very fortunate, had our little boy and my husband was still, you know, working full time. I'm a stay at home mom. It was our dream, right? Get those stores up and running, sell them, stay at home. However, a part of me felt like my entrepreneur spirit was like dying and I still wanted to bring it out. And after I had my baby and maybe a lot of moms here can resonate, um, I still, I, I felt like I still wanted to contribute to the family, right? Like I still felt like I was sitting behind four walls and a part of me just needed to kind of escape for a little bit. And so what I did is I, I, I just started direct sales, like dabbling in direct sales. It was for like a, a home decor company and it was stoneware and candles and all this heavy stuff. <laughs> and what do you have to do in direct sales? You have to do home parties, right? So here I am schlepping all my stuff. My husband come home at work. My parties were at night. I was high-fiving Tim on the way out, my husband. I was like, see you later. He'd help me carry these crates into the car I go to the party, I unload the crates, I set up the demo, I do my spiel, and literally, it was just awkward to me. You know, you could tell a lot of people were there more for the sense of mingling and drinking wine and visiting with friends and not so much with what I had to say. However, I still ended up being the top salesperson in that unit. So go figure. I think, I think this is really important for everybody to understand, and this is going to be powerful. We're going to get into in a second. We're going to get into branding. We're going to get into how to build your fan page, when you should, how to do all those things. You're going to find a ton of value. If you end up sharing this for your teams as leverage, drop a share in the comments. We'll do our best to recognize as many of you as possible. But I think there's a key thing. Julie sold her business for seven figures, okay? Seven freaking figures. And those of you that don't live in the U.S. that say freaking is a swear word, promise you, it's not. <laughs> seven freaking figures, okay? Drop a 7FF in the comment. Seven freaking figures. So yeah. when you think, well, oh, that person's too successful. How many times do we do that? Well, that person wouldn't be any good or that person's too good. I mean, it's like we're disqualifying everybody. And I actually, for me, I love talking to people that were really successful in traditional business or anything because I, I felt like they understood leverage. I felt like they understood success. They understood 
best principles. And so for me, it was the opposite. Everybody else is scared. Well, I don't want to talk to anybody. They're too successful. You don't know what's going on in their lives. It may seem like they own a business, but they own, in reality, a job. And so you look at that right there. Somebody like Julie is doing home parties. She's doing the direct sales industry. Why? Because she wanted some sort of leverage. She wanted more. She wanted some sort of residual income. And so I hope, I hope that that makes sense to you. And I hope that empowers you when you're doing this business, not to just sit there and say, okay, well, you know, they're too successful. I'm not going to talk to them. So, I mean, she's given teaching lessons right there just by sharing her story. Yeah. You don't ever want to disqualify anybody because you don't know their backstory and you don't know their certain, you don't know their situation at all. And so I, I realized drug sales wasn't it. And here I was just sitting back at my computer again, like, what am I going to do? I don't like being gone. I don't like being away from my newborn baby and on nights and weekends. This is not, and my husband, I love my husband, right? Like I actually like to be around him. <laughs> um, we like each other. And so I went back to the drawing board and I, I, I landed on meetup.com, which is online, uh, this meetup group, right? There's tons of groups. And I was clicking around on a women entrepreneur group just seeing what everyone did, you know, I was just being nosy. And I clicked on the organizer and read her bio and what she does. And nowhere in there did she say the company name of what she did. I just started That's grabbing. Stalking. You were stalking. Not I was, you were stalking. I was stalking. stalking. I was stalking. And we I'm happy I'm a sucker. But I'm the type of person that goes after something. With, when she sees something she <laughs> likes, I go after it, right? So I stalked her. I literally sent her an email and I'm like, what is it that you do? And she didn't get back to me, Rob. She did not get back. <laughs> I only waited a day though. <laughs> and I emailed her again and I said, what is it that you do? And so anyways, we had the conversation. She ended up living local. She, she came over, we chatted. I really want to know about the business. So I came in a little bit un unconventional because most people come in for the product. I came in mainly for the business, but of course I needed to know about the product and wanted to test the product myself, mm -hmm. right? You can't have one without the other. So long story short, that was it. I saw how she created curiosity. So I put a post, I actually just got a Facebook uh, page, a personal page. I post, I grabbed some friends. I think I had about 115 friends on my Facebook. I put a post out there creating curiosity when I, that's all I was told to do post but create curiosity and I did and I put um, my first 12 days what happened to me on the product and I had 45 people ask me what I was doing. And I went, oh my gosh, there's something to Facebook. Like, I don't know what this is, but <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna learn it. So everything I've learned on Facebook and all my posting, and like I said, I was branding without even realizing I was branding because I was creating that curiosity and I was showing more of a, a lifestyle and. I was doing some of the before and after pictures, of course, but I wasn't saying what it was. And I was making my post in a certain way that was attention grabbing. Mm -hmm. And then I was doing the call to action and I didn't even realize at the time what this whole branding world is all about, right? I was yeah, just doing it. Right branding. Branding. The difference is some people are branding very well and other people are branding extremely well. But either you're branding yourself well or you're branding yourself poorly. And Julie here understood and got it. She's doing her life, but she's I, I'm I'm excited to hear this because she's showing curiosity in what she did because these days everybody wants to figure out how to do social media. I always say it, if you don't have a social media strategy, then you're in trouble because your team is gonna go seek out other people and who knows what they find or what they do. So it better be part of your getting started for either your company or create one for your team because they're going to go do it. They're going to go find a social media strategy in one way or another. They're going to do it poorly or do it right because most people are using social media and to them it makes sense. Well, I'm going to go pitch people. So the fact that you just got it with curiosity and now you spent five years perfecting it, I mean, it makes sense how you had that interaction and then you've grown such a such a great – I mean, the thing is you focus on communities as well, which, which yeah. is so fun to see. Big curiosity, time. communities, we got the two C's. I'm sure there may be three or four C's, but those are those are the two biggies, right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And so I 
I grew a six figure business in a year and then a multiple six figure business in 22 months and um, learned a lot along the way, um, built a lot of relationships, right? We're in the relationship business and <clears throat> I did all, you know, learn the skill sets. I, I did all the personal development, you know, work as well, because I feel a big part of this business is personal development and working on oneself, right? Um, because if we don't have the mindset, you know, you can learn how to close, you can learn how to, you know, um, overcome objections, all that, but you have to have the right mindset. And so I struggled with belief in a little, in the beginning a bit. And it was funny because I was asked to speak. And one of my greatest, I have two fears, public speaking <laughs> and um, small spaces. I'm claustrophobic. Okay. So those are the two fears. Your husband, I bet your husband has fun with that and just around with <laughs> He knows I don't step in an elevator. It, that's a story for another day. I got stuck in one before. It's awful. So um, she wanted me to speak in an event with 75 people. And I'm like, you're out of your mind. You're out of your mind. But here's the thing. Sometimes we need others to believe in us, right, before we believe in ourselves. I'm sure we've all heard this. We know this. And she believed in me and poured that belief into me. So even though I was very nervous and I literally thought I was going to vomit before I went in front of all these people, <laughs> um, I did it. Right. And once you do something, because, you know, if you face your fear, it adds fuel. OK. And so I was able to overcome that fear by doing it over and over and over again. And this is where I start to see people are hitting this wall whenever I teach or I train and I talk about doing Facebook lives. Right. And I yeah. get it because if you rewind a year ago, when I started my fan page in June of 2016, I was told, well, I was told first to do video marketing when, or video before Facebook live was born. I had a nice conversation with Nadia in December, 2015. She's like, Julie, and it was the first time I ever met her or talked to her. She's like, you have to do video. You have to do video. And I said, Nadia, you're, you don't really know me. Um, you're crazy. I'm not doing video. Anyways, I got off and I did a video. And I did a video. It was December. I remember this. And it was the, the three drinks to have that won't pack on the pounds during the holidays, right? Because I was in a health and wellness company. Yeah. So I did the video. And it was recorded and I posted it to Facebook and it was on my personal page. This is before the fan page. And I did it one time and I'm like, yes, I did it. And I felt empowered and I never did it again. I never did it again. There's no accountability. Right. And I'm like, okay, that was cool, but I'm over it. Well then Facebook live was born. And at the time, my mentor was like, you have to get on live. You know, it was Periscope. I didn't like Peri I didn't care for Periscope. I'll be honest. I, I tried rest, it. Rest in peace, Periscope. Rest in peace. RIP. So I got on Facebook live and I'm like, this is so weird. I, you know, so I get it. Those that think that Facebook live, um, nobody's there or shows up. Like it, it's, it, it's a little strange in the beginning because you feel like you're talking to yourself, right? So Here's the thing, though. I was sitting there and I, I knew I would want to start my own training company. I knew I was going to start the fan page and and start a community there where I offer these tips and trainings to home based business owners to bring their business online. I was learning a ton about online marketing. I was learning a lot about branding. And I knew that the only way to grow that audience faster than ever, and there's strategies around a fan page, of course, to get your content seen and heard, but is was to do Facebook Live. Because Facebook Live, the engagement is like 1,500% higher, right? Yeah. Um, and so I was sitting there and I said, okay, am I going to allow fear to make this decision for me? Because I was so scared of then going to my fan page and having my upline see my video, my downline see my videos, anybody in my current comp or my last company see my videos. Like I was so worried about what other people were going to think that I was thinking about me. I had the ego scenario happening and I wasn't thinking about 
those that I wanted to impact and those that I wanted to serve. Right. And so that's what I teach people. I empower them to get over this. And I teach them a very simple strategy to do a Facebook live, because what happened was um, I did a couple of Facebook lives, but I wasn't consistent. Yeah. Right. So now I'm here. I'm on this new fan page and I wanted to get away from my warm market. I literally my thought was I am going to start this page and this page and the vision I had for the page was to grow a community where people could come and and I could build a relationship and they feel safe there and I can offer them guidance and I can answer their questions. Right. Like that was my vision for that page to grow a community, just like you're growing a community inside this group. Right. I use my page. And so I showed it. I would do a, I did a couple of Facebook lives. And then I'm like, oh, this is so weird. Nobody's here. Nobody's here. I remember my first Facebook lives, like the first couple ones on my fan page. I was loving them. I like actually hit the heart button, Rob. Like, <laughs> I'm loving my own lives. Like, what? Um, you guys. It's so hard when you start doing them. Um, for a lot of people, maybe they don't. It's the same thing on their personal because they haven't grown an audience yet. And they don't have that many. And it's just so painful for them. Right. And social proof. And they feel like just whether someone's on it or not, does it mean the content's good or not? And even if the content's bad, so what? It's Julie saying, don't let your fear own you. Don't let your fear consume you. Yeah. I always like look at the whole thing of if you're not going to care about it five years from now, then why do you care about it now? If you're not going to care about it when you're on your deathbed and you're going to laugh and say, why did I care so much? Then why now? So it's always, and I know it sounds so simple, but it really is a mental game. It really is overcoming those fears. That's why as Julie talked about a little bit earlier is the value and the importance of personal development. People think, oh, well, I don't need that. We all need it. I'm still doing yeah. it every yeah. single day. I still have a goal of reading or listening to both the combination of, 50 different books a year because it keeps me sharp and it keeps those positive voices in my head and it helps me to overcome those fears. And there's still days for me now. I remember it was last week, I think on Monday, I, I had decided I was going to do a, a Facebook Live the day before. I had no desire to do a Facebook Live. I didn't want to do Facebook Live at all. I was just seriously in my head, just I don't want to do this. And then finally I said, you know what, if you're going to do it, stop whining and just go focus on doing it, which, you know, it is easier said than done, but stop it. Get, you, you just said it best, Julie. It's your ego. Get mm -hmm. over yourself. Stop yeah. making it where you're so, so important in a negative way where everybody cares about your Facebook life. If it's that bad, you can delete it if you want to. But that's the greatest part about it is people resonate with your mistakes and your errors and just own them and go along with them. Who cares? I mess up on my Facebook lives almost every other time where I reverse the order of when I have six or seven steps. I don't even know what step I'm on. Who cares? It right. doesn't matter. Just own it. Have fun. Do it. Make it happen and help grow your business. Well, it's scientifically proven that 50% of the people will love you and 50% of the people won't. And so you're looking for the 50% that jive with what you're, what you're, you, you know, are getting taken getting down what you're putting out like that's it and so I allowed forever which felt like forever I allowed that fear to hold me back and it was my mentor that said to me Julie you have to understand because I was looking at him and I was like but all these people love you and they're following you and you're already doing it so who's going to want to hear from me and he said Julie some people will some people will love me. Some people will love you. Whoever maybe would not resonate with me would resonate with you. Meaning like stop looking at who, you know, maybe not like, let's say Nadia. I always use her as excuse because she always looks amazing in her videos. And I'm like, well, I don't always look like that. You know, I'm going to yoga. If I could do a video, I'll do a video after yoga. Or I'm running around with the kids. If I'm in my car, like I'm going to do it in my car. I'm not always... I was so worried about the way I was going to look, the way I was going to sound, um, you know, screwing up. I was worried about what other people were going to think. And so 
I, I, I'm sharing this, I'm really sharing this from my heart because I know that this is the hang up for people, right? I understand it because I lived it. And when he said it to me, some are gonna resonate with me and others are gonna resonate with you. And there's millions of them out there that need help. And so there's, it was like, I was thinking in scarcity instead of abundance. And I'm like, you know what? You're flipping right, that's it. Cause I was sick and tired of seeing you know, his growth skyrocket. And I'm like, what the heck? You're not doing Facebook Live. Did you do your Facebook Live? No. Well, then we have nothing to talk about, right? Like that was our conversation. So I decided, listen, I hope you guys, if you get anything in the in this training is if you, if you change your decision, you'll change everything, period, right? And so I made the decision to consistently show up on my fan page when nobody was there and it was crickets, okay? Um, and start doing Facebook Live, start posting memes. Um, I started a blog, started sharing that, but honestly, it was the Facebook Lives because when you're done doing a Facebook Live, and this is, this is why if you don't have a business, so let me back up, a fan page is the same as a business page. People often get this confused. Um, it's the same thing. I like to call it a passion page because that's what you're doing. You're showing up and you're sharing what you're passionate about. You are not showing up as the X, com X company or the Y product. You are there branding yourself. Okay. That's really important because a lot of my clients have pages, but they have pages that are called their oil company or their health and wellness company. And so what I do is I really dig deep with them and get them and they actually recreate another page and it's around them and what they're passionate about. And you could, you could pull content from anywhere. I mean, right. I mean, Rob, we could probably talk about content all day long, content marketing. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. It's everywhere, right? You can find it books, right? Like, so when I get Rob's book, cause it's on its way, I could show up and I will reference that it's Rob's book, but I will teach something in it. Right. And it's a whole book, tons of pages that I can reference to. Um, so it doesn't matter. That's, that's a major key that people miss, because I think people all the time, what they do is they share a quote and that's OK. But what you want to do is you want to borrow that credibility and then you want to become the expert as well with the shared credibility of sharing your insights on it. So, yes. Julie, I mean, I hope again, I always like to reiterate when I catch really important points there. And Julie just covered a really important point. So that's why I say, even in the game of networking, I say don't, very rarely, very, very rarely, do we ever approve just quotes? Because, I mean, there's some good quotes, but what's your insight on that quote? Like, you become the expert, borrow that expert's credibility, yes. and then do it. And that's yeah. part of content marketing when you're starting. I mean, I could go on my phone right now, and literally people are like, where, where do you get these posts? You post on your own, and then sometimes you post something completely different on the, the game of networking within 20 minutes, I have pre-written right now probably, I don't know, I'm guessing, probably close to 50 posts. The reason is, is because anything that I see or hear of value and it comes to my mind, whether I'm at the gym or I'm on a call or anything, instantly I put that thought in there and have that thought as something that could be a post yeah. that I create something. Now I have to go edit it in different things. Right. But I can go in there and there's never like, oh, I'm not sure what. And what it's done is, is by doing Facebook Lives, by posting content like that, I want to make sure I post good content. So now it's become made me much sharper because I got to pay attention. I've got to focus to what Julie's saying, what other people are saying so that I can increase my content, which also increases my leadership. So it's not just attraction marketing. It's not just poll marketing. There's yeah. huge value in that. But in the process, you become a much bigger leader. And that's one of the biggest, that's one of the biggest things by far that's missed in this whole process. If everyone's like poll marketing, poll marketing, you understand. You create you content marketing, you continually create that, you're gonna become so much more insightful. And then hopefully you start to live it as well. And you're gonna become a leader that's much more attractive, that has much more success, that's a much better communicator. And so I, I love that insight of you know, you're taking that and then you're sharing your insights based on what the authority figure just said. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And I want to um, hit something about branding real quick, if that's okay. Because in the beginning, 
when, you know, I got my, I got my website, my own website up and running. You guys don't have to have your own website. Please understand this. If you're in network marketing, don't feel like you need to go and have your own website. I will encourage you to start a, some sort of fan page, passion page, right? Where you can start creating some content maybe because it's going to help you move away. People ask all the time, how can I move away from my, my warm market? Well, there you go, right? And I, I'm going to share with you how in a minute here. But with branding, when I got started, I was like, oh, I got to, you know, I spent so much time thinking about colors and logos and photos and all this stuff. And I'm going to tell you right now, your audience, you start attracting to you after you're, you know, you're putting this content out and you want to think about where's my target market? You know, who is my target audience? Because then you know what kind of content to, to deliver. So normally what I do is I have like a chart and anytime I get some sort of content idea or something that sparks, like I'll use, you could use like Evernote and just jot it in real quick, but that, then have a really chart, nice. right? Like have a chart. And put all of your, so so three columns, content ideas, okay, content topics, whatever you want to call it, pains and struggles, and your solutions, okay? Because most, if you, if you are creating content around your network marketing company, most often you have solutions for different people or different types of solutions. So if you're in health and wellness, it could be weight loss, it could be you talking about weight gain, it could be improved sleep, improve skin, improve your fitness, muscle tone, right? Like there's so much content around health and wellness. So what I call it is just brain dumping. And you just want to be able to brain dump and just like, even if you're reading a book, you're like, oh my gosh, this was such a great book. Um, like one of my favorite books, no, I've not read your book yet now, Rob, but one of my favorite books I'll give you guys is The Big Leap. I love that book by Gay Hendricks. I learned a lot from that book. And so I could talk about the four quadrants and that's four, if not longer, probably two weeks of content that I can do Facebook lives about. Does that make sense? You take like this, like, let's just say recruiting. It could be three tips to recruiting online, three tips to recruiting offline, like what to look for in a prospect, you know, like it's almost like an umbrella. And I think so many people get nervous about plagiarizing. Well, you don't ever plagiarize. But as I said, if you're you're referencing something in Rob's book, you say, hey, um, I'm, I'm, I actually read this amazing book. It's by Rob Sperry. And then you're you're referencing the content, but you're still teaching them something. So you're still looked at as the authority. So what I did, nobody was on that fan page. It was it was harder than giving birth almost. <laughs> like I'm serious. You women out there, I'm telling you. But here's the thing. I said, I'm doing it. This is my vision. I'm going I'm going to be consistent with it. And it's kind of like if you build it, they will come. So I was doing the Facebook Live, Facebook Live. Now, for those of you that are aware of this, there's something called uh, boosting your post on a fan page. It's really perfect. Simple. That's really? what I was going to ask you is everybody will always ask, like, do I boost? Yes. How much spend am I boost? Do I yeah. need to do, there's different theories, right? I need to do five year, five days for the algorithm to kick in, or can I just do a day or two? Like yeah. people want to know if I'm going to boost, they don't want to waste that boosted post and put money right. towards them, right? Which is, you know, fan pages, right? They don't show very, the visibility is not very good at the beginning until, unless you boost posts, because good old Facebook owner Mark Zuckerberg says, well, if it's a fan page or business page, we want you to pay to play. Yeah, but that's but but that's Facebook now in general. Like even if you think yeah. you're using your personal page, um, they're gonna give the person that is throwing some. So here's here's the thing: you're gonna pay with time because it's gonna take you way longer to build, or you're gonna pay with your dollars, right? So you have to decide. But if you're running a business, a true business, and you want to be seen and get heard, yes, it takes some advertising dollars. But I'm gonna tell you. It's like what a cup of coffee costs, okay? Take three bucks, throw it behind a video. You're still going to get more views than if you just let it sit there. So that's what I started to do. Here's the three things. Here's the three things I did when I started my fan page that, that really helped skyrocket my following. 
I ran something called um, a likes ad campaign, which basically is like you're you're running billboard in the feed. And and all you know, I just wrote a sentence or two, and I had the photo of me because again, we're branding ourselves, right? So it was a photo of me. This is who I am. I ran that five dollars a day, five dollars a day. Sometimes it didn't even take the whole five dollars, right? But I kind of had that on continuous to just it's your running billboard in the feed. It's your running billboard in the feed. People will start seeing it. Well, simultaneous, simultaneously, I would do a Facebook Live and I would throw $3 in the Facebook Live video. So now they're seeing you know, my Facebook Live and they're seeing my likes ad campaign and they're like, okay, who is this chick, right? And so what happened eventually is people are like, my gosh, I'm seeing you in the feed all the time. I'm like, yes, good advertising dollars, right? Well, so eventually that's what happened. So we're talking, I had two campaigns running, three and five. And then I would run the likes at, or the um, boost for like a day or two and just see if it had high engagement. And if it mm -hmm. didn't, I didn't boost it again. So then I tried a different video. My branding videos, my Facebook, when I talked about Facebook, those videos were getting really high engagement and my inspirational videos were getting high. So here's the thing. This is what I want to say about branding. If you listen to your audience who will start to show up, the more you keep doing this, you have to pay attention to what they want. And as you're building it, you could also start asking them what kind of content. Listen, I'm going to be showing up doing these Facebook live trainings. I'm so happy you're here. I'm growing this community. What other content would you like me to share with you around this? Right. And that's all I started to do. I started to engage with them. I started to answer them. Like I was making sure I was going there and responding to comments several times a day. I was going in and reading my messages. Maybe there was one, maybe there was none. Eventually, it, it took about a couple months, okay? It doesn't happen overnight, but eventually it just kept growing and growing and growing. Another thing you wanna make sure that you have on your fan page is a welcome video. So at the top of my fan page, I have a pinned post and it's welcome to this community. You know, welcome. Um, here's my, uh, I think I have my, oh God, I did this so long ago. My website's in there. Um, it's just a paragraph or two about who I am. And then I have them watch the video. And so that's another thing I can throw into the feed $3 a day, my welcome video. Cause it, cause what I did as I said, tell me a little bit about you in the comments below and what your business is. Like I wanted them to open up or, you know, what your pains and struggles are. And I wanted them to open up. So that video has, I, it, well, the, the I other think, you know, more. I mean, there's a lot of points there. What Julie just said there is she is invoking engagement and the more yes. engagement you get on a post, the more Facebook deems that post is popular. Facebook wants to stay relevant. So they're going to promote for free any post that's popular more to more people. There's going to be more visibility. If the less your post gets likes and comments, the less likely they're going to post it. So yeah, she's paying, but then she's also getting a bump because she's asking engaging, engaging questions of, tell me a little bit about yourself. The other thing she was doing is she started talking about is she's seeing which videos worked well for two reasons. One, if a video works well, you can always put more money towards that and boost that post again and say, well, this is a great video. People are yes. loving it. So I might as well promote this. And then two, what she said, and this is always something important when people ask me, well, what do I do with Facebook lives? I'm like, I don't know your focus or emphasis. I don't know your audience. I don't know your voice. You've got to find that voice. The best thing you can do is go do 10 Facebook lives eventually 15, 20, whatever you end up at, but start out with 10, you go back and you get to see which one's got the most engagement. That's what Julie did. That's what I did. For me, I love talking about soft topics, which is just life, open-ended topics that didn't have solutions. My, my audience hated, hated. You may say, Rob, I don't. Yeah, you did because the views were so low. But when I talked about recruiting, social media or money, the, the, the engagement went through the roof. So then what I did is I said, okay, well, you want to hear from those three things. I want to talk about life. So I'm going to do both. I'm going to create the headline as something to pertain to those things. And then what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to intertwine some of the things that I like to intertwine my personality. And that's where I found the best of both worlds. But you don't even know that. Julie didn't know that. I didn't know that until we actually took action, until we made it happen. You've got to take action. You've got to make it happen or else you have no idea what your audience wants. Or you're just guessing. We didn't yeah. guess. We found out and then we asked. Right, right. And your audience will develop your brand for you. I don't know if that makes sense, but they ended up, it's not about the logos or the colors and having all this pretty stuff. Like for me, what branding ended up ultimately being, and, and I'm this is truly coming from me. I've never heard this and I'm sure it's somewhere. So I'm just going to say this. I, I always will reference people when it, when I know. But for me, with with my community there, um, they mean so much to me, and and I know I mean a lot to them as well. It's cool because we've developed these this relationship. But branding to me was more of the emotion that I had them feeling, you know, during my 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 Facebook lives. Like we developed this emotion. Okay, so the branding I feel is how you feel when you see that person coming through your feed. So like now people will be like, oh, there's Julie. I wonder what she's talking about because I either made them happy or I excited them or I struck a chord with them or I tapped into one of their emotions during one of my lives or I, you know, um, I made sense to them. Whatever it is, you know, maybe it was one of my fun life. Like re re recently, right after Halloween, I did a live with um, a wig on, like just for fun. I have this wig, and it was during Kate's uh, contest, and and so I just had fun with it, right? Um, I never had fun with my Facebook lives in the beginning because I was always still so nervous about how to show up, right? I have to be so serious and so polished. And you know what? You don't have to be that way. You just genuinely have to show up as you. And so branding for me is I wanted people to have this certain feeling when they saw me or heard me um, or, you know, just. It's like, like they're hanging out, out with you, right? Yes. You're your it's live. super cool. You yes. feel like you're hanging out. And same thing for me. I mean, I was always so worried about being goofy or different and, it took me a while to feel just natural where I can joke around, I can make, make mistakes, I laugh around. I almost feel like what you're saying, I've never thought of it this way, or maybe I have and forgot about it. It's almost like your Facebook lives become, become conversations. And at the beginning, you don't know who you're having a conversation with. Right. I've never no one's thought of it that way, but <laughs> thinking of what you're saying, it's making me think of, you know, where you're joking around, you're having fun. And it's almost like you think of, you're not even thinking of physical person, but it's almost like in a sense you are because you know exactly who you're talking to. And now Julie's so comfortable and I'm so comfortable, which took me, I don't know, 20, 30 Facebook lives of just hating it and feeling nervous. And just, I was so just uncomfortable. People could sense it. I mean, someone told me, about two months ago, they said, your Facebook lives, I really love them now. Last year, they were so bad. I said, well, thank you for telling me that now. But, you know, now I feel comfortable and it's good. And, and, and you know what? The thing is, is some people don't like my lives. Some people don't like your lives. That's okay. We're not trying yeah. to please everyone. So what would you say, last question would be, what would be your – you know, and maybe it's summarizing some of the stuff we said, but what would just be your your best advice right now, whether someone's relaunching their business yeah. or they're new to this business and they want to be able to maximize social media, they want to do it the right way. What would be, you know, maybe, like I said, maybe it's just summarizing, maybe it's reiterating, or maybe it's a, a bonus tip, whatever we want to call that. What would be your advice to them as far as having some of that success on social media because there's been so many different insights and please before we do this again if you if you share this please drop a share in the comments i know a ton of you did be live's not letting me show the comments right now for some reason but at least we're still live and then also let's give a big thanks to julia she's answering this this last question so uh, thank you um, um i think basically my number one tip always will be to show up as you and nobody else. You know what I mean? Like 
you have to be authentic. You, you must be genuine because people will smell that a mile away if you're not. And so if you're not and you're trying to be somebody else, you're also going to attract the not the right person to you or the right, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. so um, that's where I really got clear in the beginning of, of the, the, we always talk about target market and that audience that we, we were looking to attract, right? The law of attraction, who are we looking to attract to us? And show up as that person, just show up as that person. Um, and I understand, again, I'm gonna talk about this, the fear around Facebook Live and really, encourage you guys to overcome it and the way that you overcome it is by doing it just making the decision and do it um because you're one decision away from a totally different life like literally uh growing that fan page community right i 45,000 followers since june of last year um and, and I mean like engaging followers, right? Where I'm actually growing relationships with people, which is totally cool. Um, and I'm gonna tell you right now, if you just shift, I, I don't know if you're doing this, but if you are out there and you're throwing out your product and you're throwing out you know, your before and after pictures or whatever it is, and it doesn't feel authentic to you, then stop. And the only thing I'd say is, look at starting a fan page because there you could show up and you can grow this whole new community and you don't have to worry about bugging friends and family and really just taking the tips I, I told you today. I mean, honestly, um, by boosting those posts for a couple bucks a day, it's what got me into the feed and what got me into people's lives and attracted people in right with the pull marketing that we talk about. And so, um, we you know we're all capable of success, right? You just have to make the decision to 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 do something, to go after it and do it. And so, um, I know how I know how people feel. I can relate, and I don't say my numbers to just you know, you know, boast myself. I say it because I lived it, and it was through consistency and being intentional with my videos intentional, knowing where I wanted to lead them to, whether it was to just comment or message me or if I wanted to send them somewhere or if they, you know, um, or if I was creating content around something to do with my network marketing company to comment more info, right? So again, have fun with it, play with it. It's your community. So guess what? You get the, you get to invite in who you want and you get to push out who you don't. And I've had to push people out. There are still those haters out there that just show up and want to hate on you. And you know what? That's cool. That's what block and delete are for. <laughs> or is right. Like it happens to everybody. Like we said, 50% will love you. 50% won't. So I don't know. I just hope that I was able to um, just help encourage somebody on here to get out there and, and start doing the do. So helpful. No, so helpful. And I love at the end how you said, be authentic, but if it doesn't feel right, don't do it. Right. So, and again, th those are principles. You know, you're supposed to talk to new people, but if you're taught in a way that doesn't fit your personality, anytime you're taught something by a leader or mentor, always focus on understanding the principle more than the technique. If you understand the principle, you can integrate your own authenticity to make it work. The way that, and I'll just finish with this, the way that I was taught, to sign up people from my mentor who taught me so many incredible things, but he had a crazy credibility. He's made $30 million in the industry now. 10 years ago, it was 20 million. He starts out and he's like, yep, you call somebody and just tell them, I need your credit card information. You're signing up, I'm starting a business. And that works for him, that worked for him. For me, no way, I'm not doing that. For me, that's <laughs> like complete opposite of my personality, my style, it ruins my authenticity. It's everything against who I am. And so the principle behind it was the world loves boldness. He was very boldness. He took charge and told what people what to do. So I applied that principle in my own way where I was never overbearing. I led through influence, not through title, but it took time for me to learn and find my way to find my voice. And so I challenge you to find your way to find your voice. If it ever feels icky and you're like, no, I don't like that. I feel like a taker then don't yeah. do it. But understand the principle of what they're doing, find the good in it, mm -hmm. and then apply that principle 
into your business is you've learned so many incredible principles from Julie and, and what she's done and how she's had success. And there's so many different success stories that you guys have heard, not just from these interviews, but from other people as you follow and you watch. And that's what's fun is we watch them all and we pick bits and pieces that we like and what they do and the things that we don't, we respect them and we just let them do their thing. And that's what's great. And we're teaching those principles. So I hope that that was helpful for everybody. I know, Julie, I learned a ton. I know the engagement and comments were great. And I'm excited to, to see them throughout the course of the next couple of days, weeks, months. And we'll have to get on. And, and I think the next one we'll do is, is we'll leave them with a cliffhanger is how do you transition now mm -hmm. once they start interacting with you into yeah. what yeah. do you say to get them in your business or what do you do to get them to start that conversation and so now people are going to be dying to hear yeah. part two. So well, that'll be that'll be part quick. two. No, because yeah. it's important, you guys, because you want to know this. So we have to do a part two because what happened was after I started the page, I didn't even get in the goods. Business exploded, right? Like I was able to create three additional six-figure income streams on top of network marketing. So four, like crazy. And then not just that. In five weeks from doing one Facebook Live, I enrolled 22 business builders into my network marketing company. You guys, this happens because it was all on my fan page, right? But it happens because you're building a brand. People know, like, and trust you. You're doing the Facebook Live so they could feel you, hear you, see you. You guys, that's a powerful combination. But then what do you do to, you know, take it a step further with them? Super important. So, yeah, it's a cliffhanger. <laughs> but... Glad to do another part time. Two, part two. So thank you. Um, <laughs> one another, so thanks for your time, Julie. I appreciate you. Glad we made it through the Facebook technical difficulties. Thank you. Uh, awesome. Thanks for, in. thanks for all the shares. We appreciate you. Bye. Thanks.